Good evening from New York. This is Monday, January 10th. As Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords of Arizona still fights for her life tonight, and we get glimmers of hope that we might soon be able to talk about the nature, not the chances, of her recovery, her surgeons join us. In our fifth story tonight, we're beginning tonight to see what impact the shooting and the reaction and the evidence will have when it comes to uniting this country in a commitment to abandon the rhetoric of violence, to abandon the rhetoric of apocalyptic problems that require violent solutions. That impact today, almost negligible. Those refusing to acknowledge the role that politics plays in loading the guns of madmen, insisting that politics have no part in this discussion, attacking the Arizona sheriff who made the obvious point that politics is inextricable. The sheriff standing by to join us as well. Politics inextricable from this. Politics, what drew not just the shooter, shooter and the target together, but also many of the victims, some of the heroes. One who came to thank Giffords for what the Democratic stimulus package had done for her business, ended up saving lives, also standing by to share her story. Some of the dead, too, were drawn there by politics. Federal Judge John Roll, 63 years old, wanted to discuss judicial backups. Gabriel Zimmerman, 30-year-old man whose job was politics, working in Gifford's office to serve constituents. Dorwin Stoddard, 76 years old, married his high school sweetheart. She's one of the wounded. She says her late husband saved her life. They stopped by to tell Giffords what a good job she was doing. Dorothy Morris, 76, married 55 years, husband wounded. 79-year-old Phyllis Schneck, who made quilts for charity. A Republican who had come to like Ms. Giffords and came to meet her. Christina Taylor Green, drawn there to learn about politics, having recently joined her student council. Her life uniquely American, born on 9-11. Christina, a little leaguer, the daughter of a former minor league pitcher in the American pastime, granddaughter of Dallas Green, still a hero in Philadelphia, where he managed the Phillies to their first world championship, later manager of both New York teams, general manager of Chicago's Cubs. The man accused of killing them, Jared Lee Loeffner, at his first court appearance today. His family reportedly blockading their house when the FBI first tried to enter today, found behind the house in a camouflage tent a macabre display with a replica of a human skull. An envelope found at his house apparently naming Giffords as target for assassination, his politics apparently incoherent, his distrust for government, however, well documented, complaining about government takeover, the unconstitutionality of government, U.S. currency, and so forth. Republican Senator John Kyle of Arizona yesterday criticizing Pima County Sheriff Clarence Dupnik for his remarks on Saturday about the political climate in Arizona, where Congresswoman Giffords had been targeted repeatedly by violent rhetoric. I hope that all Americans are saddened and as shocked as we are. And I hope that some of them, or most of them, are as angry as I am and as a lot of us are. And I think it's time as a country that we need to do a little soul searching because I think it's the vitriolic rhetoric that we hear day in and day out from uh, people in the radio business and some people in the TV business and what we see on TV and how our youngsters are being raised. That this has not become the nice United States of America that most of us grew up in. Right-wing radio and some on TV, as he phrased it, responding by A, claiming left-wing political rhetoric comes in equal measure and at equal volume, though it does not, and B, the criticism of violent political rhetoric, rhetoric is itself politically motivated. Never mind that it was Gifford's father when asked whether she had any enemies who replied, quote, the whole Tea Party, unquote, or that Giffords herself had emailed a Republican friend on the eve of her shooting discussing ways to tone down the rhetoric. Or that the FBI director said the Internet has made the availability of hate speech a challenge. Or that an anonymous senior Republican senator told Politico the shooting was a cautionary tale for Republicans. Quote, there is a need for some reflection here. What is too far now? Or that the Tea Party Express replies to this day's events with a fundraising email. Almost overlooked in all this was the Secretary of State speaking in and to the Middle East in the United Arab Emirates. We have extremists in my country, a wonderful, incredibly brave young woman Congress member. Uh, Congresswoman Giffords was just shot by an extremist in our country. The extremists and their voices, the crazy voices that sometimes get on the TV, that's not who we are, that's not who you are. National Journal reports tonight President Obama is likely to go to Tucson on Wednesday. And if the quintessential Americanness of the victims had not been clear, there was today the identical twin of the congresswoman's astronaut husband, himself an astronaut, 
calling for an end to irresponsible words, calling for that even from the soundless void of space. We have a unique vantage point here aboard the International Space Station. As I look out the window, I see a very beautiful planet that seems very inviting and peaceful. Unfortunately, it is not. These days, we're constantly reminded of the unspeakable acts of violence and damage we can inflict upon one another, not just with our actions, but also with our irresponsible words. We are better than this. We must do better. The crew of ISS Expedition 26 and the flight control centers around the world would like to observe a moment of silence in honor of all the victims, which include my sister-in-law, Gabrielle Giffords, a caring and dedicated public servant. And the president today leading that national moment of silence, speaking later today to the better angels of our nature. Obviously, all of us are still grieving and in shock from the tragedy that took place. Gabby Giffords and others are still fighting to recover. Families are still absorbing the enormity of their losses. We have a criminal investigation that is ongoing and charges that no doubt will be brought against the perpetrator of this heinous crime. I think it's important for us to also focus, though, on the extraordinary courage that was shown during the course of these events. A 20-year-old college student who ran into the line of fire to rescue his boss. A wounded woman who helped secure the ammunition uh, that might have caused uh, even more damage. Uh, the citizens who wrestled down the gun. Uh, part of what I think that speaks to is uh, the best of America, uh, even in the face of such uh, mindless violence. NBC News confirming now the president is heading to Tucson Wednesday. We'll start, though, with the paramount issue. Uh, Dr. Reiner Grusner, the leader of the surgery team at the hospital treating uh, Congresswoman Giffords, the University of Arizona Medical Center, and Dr. Michael Lamole, the neurosurgeon who operated uh, Congresswoman Giffords. Gentlemen, thank you for your time tonight. Let me start, uh, Dr. Grusner, with you. There, there was smiling, even some joking at the news briefing this morning. Does that say something about the Congresswoman's condition? Well, it was clearly not in regards to the condition of the patients. Uh, there's really nothing, nothing to smile about uh, when it comes to a statewide or even a national tragedy. Uh, I think, I think we were hopeful that the condition of the patients have stabilized. Uh, we have discharged a few of the ten patients that were originally hospitalized. Um, we have uh, moved most patients from the surgical intensive care unit to regular floors. And the one patient uh, that remains in critical condition is the congresswoman. Dr. Lamole, uh, tomorrow, as I understand it, is considered kind of a benchmark day in terms of monitoring her condition for signs, for early indications of how she might do down the road. Can you explain why that is? It can be a benchmark day, and that's because we typically see the brain swelling reach its maximum around this day for most traumatic brain injuries. That is not always the case, and because of that, we're constantly using the words like cautiously optimistic and the fact that she's still in critical condition. The outside limit on the, that, that uh, fingers crossed kind of uh, uh, approach to the swelling is what, about 10 days? I think that's really the most we would, would uh, expect to see, but I hope that we'll see the signs that the swelling is subsiding even before that. Another question, uh, and this is, if this is wildly inaccurate, please correct me, Dr. Lamole. Uh, the, the, the discussion of what her recovery might look like long term, my layman's understanding of this kind of brain trauma is that which half of the brain was damaged is imperative, that where she was shot uh, she would be more likely to be facing challenges that relate to speech and walking and maybe vision, but that who she is, the essence of her personality, her memory and such, that's likely to be less impacted. Is that anywhere close to correct? 
Yes, I couldn't even speculate on that at this time. Uh, remember, our ability to examine her right now is very limited. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, to show us a, a thumb or wiggle your toes or something like that. And so all of those higher and very subtle cognitive functions cannot even be assessed at this time. Uh, Dr. Gerstner, uh, can you give us some idea of how much she might be aware of what, of what happened? Does she know she has been uh, shot? Did she indeed, as there were reports, uh, evince knowledge that her husband was with her after the surgery? Well, she, she is still intubated, so she is not able to speak on her own. Um, we believe that uh, she can understand and listen uh, to a certain degree to her husband. But as Dr. Limol said, everything else at this point is still speculation. I think once we extubate her, we will have a better assessment, and then uh, we'll be able to uh, let you know and, and the rest of the country uh, to what degree um, she will recover. But uh, as Dr. Limol said, I mean, there are so many uncertainties uh, that we are dealing with at this point. I think what is encouraging is the fact that the swelling has decreased. Uh, um, we see it on her face. Uh, we also believe that her brain has swelling has improved. Uh, we will get another CT tomorrow and then reassess things. But as to short uh, and particularly to long-term prognosis, it is way too early. Certainly. Uh, Dr. Rainer Grusner, the chairman of the surgery department at the University of Arizona Medical Center, and Dr. Gerald Lamole, the, uh, the near neurosurgeon who worked on Congresswoman Giffords, uh, we thank you kindly for your time tonight, gentlemen. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you.